Hello and welcome to Worship. My name is Major Mel Smith and I'm the Divisional Mission Enabler in the Seven and Somerset Division. If you regularly worship with us or if you are here for the first time, you are welcome. The Salvation Army's Commitments uh, theme for 2021 is going forward together, living in God's covenant, based on this verse from Jeremiah 31, verse 33. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. During worship, we will think about going forward together, together with God and together as a church community. These are words from the prophet Isaiah from chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One, of Israel, your Saviour. We have a faithful God who is always with us and will never leave us.
How has your week been? Being in another lockdown is not easy and our days become merged and much the same and maybe even boring. How are you spending your time? Are you working? Are you homeschooling your children? Are you able to walk or exercise? Maybe you're cooking or baking more, then you need more exercise and walking. Maybe you have time to make more phone calls or FaceTime friends and family. Maybe you're watching a little bit more TV or catching up on some series. There's puzzles to do, maybe jigsaws or word searches. Maybe you've been able to do some more reading or even some craft activities or some sewing. What about decorating your house or even decluttering? But what about spending time with God? How much time have you been able to spend with God during lockdown? Reading your Bible and praying. Are you able to concentrate on this and spend quality time with your Father? Let us spend a few minutes now as we listen to mid all the traffic of the ways. There is a lot happening in the world around us, but we can find quiet and peace when we spend time with God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our God and that you are with us no matter what we are going through. Our world is hurting at the moment and we are hurting too in many ways, having lost our freedom and our ability to see and spend time with family and friends. We thank you that we can turn to you in prayer. We know that you will comfort and love us, and that in you, Father, 
we can find quietness and peace. Peace with you, despite what is going on around us. We pray for all those affected with coronavirus and pray for their bodies to heal. We thank you for the amazing NHS staff who are looking after those who are unwell and those who are being vaccinated. Help us to reach out to our family and friends and our neighbours too, to help them practically where we can and to encourage them with phone calls. Help us bring some light into this dark world. Amen. The Bible reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 to 16. And I'm reading selected verses from the Passion Translation. My beloved ones, don't ever limit your joy or fail to rejoice in the wonderful experience of knowing our Lord Jesus. I don't mind repeating what I've already written you because it protects you. Beware of those religious hypocrites who teach that you should be circumcised to please God. For we have already experienced heart circumcision and we worship God in the power and freedom of the Holy Spirit, not in laws and religious duties. We are those who boast in what Jesus Christ has done and not in what we can accomplish in our own strength. It's true that I once relied on all that I had become. I had a reason to boast and impress people with my accomplishments. More than others, for my pedigree was impeccable. Yet all of the accomplishments that I once took credit for, I've now forsaken them. And I regard it all as nothing compared to the delight of experiencing Jesus Christ as my Lord. To truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting on the garbage heap. It's all like a pile of manure to me now, so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embrace him as Lord in all of his greatness. My passion is to be consumed with him and not clinging to my own righteousness, based in keeping the written law. My righteousness will be his, based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, the very righteousness that comes from God. And I continually long to know more, to know the wonders of Jesus more fully, and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. I will be one with him in his sufferings, and I will be one with him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of death. I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfil and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. So let all who are fully mature have this same passion and if anyone is not yet gripped by these desires God will reveal it to them. And let us all advance together to reach this victory prize following one path with one passion. <laughs>
have anything that you are looking forward to? What are you looking forward to? I guess one thing that most people are looking forward to is receiving their vaccine and being able to return to normal life, whatever that might look like going into the future. During November and December, my husband and I made sure that we walked every day to get some fresh air and exercise. So this year, I'm planning to walk every day. I've managed it so far and I've looked forward to my walk every day. We have managed to dodge any rain so far, but it may be a different story if it's raining hard. It's interesting how the miles add up and during the first year, uh, week of the year we had walked 37 miles and the second week 34 miles. As well as the fresh air and exercise, it's also time for Steve and I to catch up on conversations we've had with other people and talk through our work and try and plan for the future. We are walking forward together into 2021 and praying for the Seven and Somerset Division and your call as we go. I wonder what your personal goals are for the year and what your goals are as a call as you move forward together. The mission statement of the Salvation Army says that we are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ and that we exist to save souls, grow saints and serve suffering humanity. And we have values as well. Maybe not as well known, but these are our values. Our identity and God-given mission as disciples of Jesus Christ are shaped by the values of the Kingdom of God. We love God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. And we love our neighbour as ourselves. We have integrity in everything we do. Being reliable, trustworthy, transparent and honest in our personal and business relationships. We are accountable to God in every area of our lives and to others in all our dealings. We have compassion for all people. We are passionate about unconditionally demonstrating God's love to everyone. We have respect for people and planet, seeing, seeing the God-given potential in every person and being stewards of the environment. And finally, we are bold in proclaiming the gospel in everything that we do and in fighting for social justice. How are you incorporating these values in your everyday life? Paul wrote in his letter to the Philippians that he wanted to know Jesus more and to be like him. We need to listen to Paul as it is still relevant to us all today. As we start or as we continue on our Christian journey, we need to strive to be more like Jesus and be Jesus to everyone we meet. We also need to take on board our values and try to live these out every day in all that we do. It's not easy and some will be hard and some will be easy, but we have to try as disciples of Jesus. What does your relationship with God look like? Is it an intimate relationship that you feel comfortable with and grow stronger and deeper as you get to know each other better? Or is it a bit like a friendship that you do really value, where you speak quite a lot, but haven't always got time for each other, as you have other things that take up time and get in the way? Or is it a passing acquaintance, when you speak to someone if you see them, or if you remember to contact them? We need to have that intimate relationship with Jesus, that Paul was striving for, so that we can know the wonders of Jesus more fully, and experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working 
in us. Is this what you are striving for? Is this what you should be striving for? We held a divisional morning of prayer a couple of weeks ago and it was a privilege to pray for our division and people that we know. This is important in our relationship with God. And if you miss this morning of prayer, keep a lookout because we will be doing some more mornings and evenings of prayer as a division. We can all join together to pray. As a church community, we need to be working together to save souls, grow saints and serve suffering humanity. It is not just the leader's job to do this, but as disciples of Jesus, we are all responsible for reaching out to others, to tell them about Jesus and to help them in their times of need. We also need to receive spiritual nourishment to help us grow in our discipleship journey and in our relationship with Jesus. We get this from being with and learning from other Christians and also from what we read. You could be involved with Bible studies, prayer meetings, maybe courses like Alpha or the prayer course or a life group where you do life with others in the group. As we read earlier, we know that God is with us in all we try to do and strive to be. But here are a few Bible verses that may help you today. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Romans 12 verse 2 we read, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. In Hebrews 12 verse 1 it says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. And a well-known verse from Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We have so much to look forward to if we press on toward the goal which is eternal life with Jesus in heaven. Are you looking forward to this? If not, you should be. Our challenge is to go into the world and be disciples. But we must also go into the world and make disciples. God is sending you out into the world. Go with excitement. Go with expectation. Go with fear. And go and do what God calls you to do. So what are you looking forward to? As you go forward with God and as you go forward with your church community this year and in the coming years. As you reflect on the way forward with God and with your church community, listen to this song entitled Send Me Lord. I'm undone by your holiness in the light of your holiness i'm undone by your holiness send me lord letting go of my selfishness 
Jesus, send me, Lord. 